Hello everyone here at osmvtxtreviews.com. You're watching our full video review of the Barnes & Noble Nook Color. This is an ebook reader that used to say a non-traditional LCD display instead of an e-ink screen. The advantages of this is if you want to get an e-book reader for your kids or if you love to read magazines, this displays the colors and pictures in those contents uh, very well. But if you're looking for something just to read books or newspaper articles, then you're going to be better off with an e-ink screen because it's better for your eyes. It doesn't have as much glare in the sunlight because a you know LCD screen has a lot of glare and smudges on it. And thirdly, the battery life is going to be a lot longer than something like this, which drains a lot of juice and power. That said, if you want something that's really akin to that of a tablet experience, perhaps you like to browse the web, download applications, the Barnes & Noble Color is a good option to go because it's inexpensive, coming in at only $200, and has a lot of features and offers a very premium build quality. The device itself feels, again, very good in the hand, even though it's mainly made out of rubber and plastic. You can see the front of the, screen is front of the device is dominated by a 7-inch touchscreen. This is a capacitive, multi-touch enabled one, so you can browse and zoom in and out and uh, supports pinch-to-zoom gestures in the browser and other applications. Down below the screen, we have access to only one button, and this is the home button, which is also the unlock key to unlock the screen itself. It isn't backlit, so you're going to have a harder time finding it in darker conditions, but it has a nice bump to it, and it's very tactile and easy to press. The bottom part is also made out of glass, so it has a nice finish as well. The left-hand corner has a lanyard hold, which you can put a keychain or any decoration on. And again, the, the screen itself is inset from the frame, so it's a little bit of an uh, inward bump, so it's easier for you to grip and not smudge the screen when you're holding it in uh, the traditional landscape mode. The left hand side of the device is dominated by a traditional power on and off key. You can also see that the tablet is fairly slim. The top of the device also has a 3.5mm headphone jack for listening to music and plugging in your favorite pair of headphones. And on the right hand side we have access to volume up and down keys for adjusting that for music and videos. The bottom only has a micro USB for charging and syncing the device. The back has a speaker for uh, you know playing back music and content uh, on video content. Also we have behind a little bit of a flap here is a micro, micro, US, micro SD card slot and this allows you to uh, add more memory to this device in case you want to expand its internal uh, memory of 4 or 8 gigabytes um, in order to play more music, download more applications, and get more video content off of the device. The back is, an, is a nice soft touch material so it doesn't uh, attract too many fingerprints and smudges which is good. Now turning on the device, uh, you can see that the screen is very, very good. This is at the lowest setting right now, which is still extremely readable even under bright light that we have indoors. So it's pretty impressive in terms of brightness and saturation. You can see that the screen, uh, the layering between the actual the, uh, TFT, TFT screen and actual glass layer is very minimalistic. And it looks like it's actually printed on here, and that's because uh, the screen here uh, is actually designed by LG, and it's a next generation uh, touchscreen technology that reduces the space between the glass and the actual screen itself so that you won't have as much issues in terms of uh, reading and there's not as much glare as a traditional screen and also viewing angles on this device is said to be a lot better than other uh, tablet touchscreens and I do believe that because um, so far it's looked uh, pretty good and uh, I've been pretty impressed overall with the screen quality of this thing. So you can see that the Nook Color actually runs on a, on a version of Android, but of course Barnes & Noble has customized this product to their likings, and it's still um, in its essentially an ebook reader first, and uh, everything else second. So I'm just going to turn on the brightness a little bit brighter, and you can see that it gets all the way to super bright, or maximum brightness, and it's uh, glaring. Uh, I'm not going to do that bright, I'm going to do about halfway here so that the camera can still pick up everything that's happening on screen, and I'm turning on Wi-Fi, and it looks good to go. So in terms of the ho uh, home screen, you have uh, different wallpapers that you can choose and select from, but the stock one is just this Nook Color one. If you want to choose and select a different uh, wallpaper, you can press and hold on it, and it gives you the option to change your wallpaper, just like on traditional Android. Now, of course, Barnes & Noble didn't tell us uh, exactly what Android version this device is running, but it seems to be uh, pretty up-to-date, and things are relatively snappy and responsive, probably because of the res responsive touchscreen itself. But you can see that you have all of, the all of these different wallpapers to select from if I wanted to use this one instead. I can press on it, set as wallpaper, and now my wallpaper will have hopefully, well, maybe not changed. Change wallpaper. Let's select this one actually instead. Set wallpaper. Oh, and it's just a little bit delayed. So now we're finally catching up, and you can see that um, our wallpaper has now changed.
Just like on Android, we can add more uh, pages to this thing as we as we want. So right now we have three customizable uh, home screens, and we can slide back and forth between them very easily and very fluidly. Uh, the processor is probably not as fast as your uh, most up-to-date, you know, Android smartphone or Android tablet, and that's to be expected because this thing is mostly going to be used for reading books and reading magazines. So it doesn't need as extensive as a processor. It just needs a good screen, which it already has. Um, so sometimes when you're doing tasks like you saw when changing a wallpaper, it is slightly sluggish, but most things will still be responsive and snappy. Um, unlike a traditional Android uh, devices, this thing doesn't have the option to have widgets on it. So unlike uh, a tablet, you can't add that analog clock or different weather widgets and stuff like that. People kind of like to do that. This really only has widgets for books, um, which is still pretty neat. But again, it just tells you that Barnes & Noble has limited that functionality. You can add different books on here, uh, like Alice in Wonderland or any book that you're commonly, uh, you have in your library. You can drag and drop it onto your home screen and then just press it and you can start reading, which is pretty nice. You'll notice that most of your commonly used applications will be located on the bottom here in a little out of a app tray. And you can slide between this. Uh, this is also a list of your most commonly used and most commonly opened uh, applications. So as this device will uh, automatically adjust to you know how much you use a particular feature, that feature will pop up on this bottom tray. So for example, I play chess probably uh, you know two times a day, so it's going to pop up on the screen here. And uh, if I do uh, different games, it's also going to pop up. Uh, respectively. And I've also read these magazines and books, so it, they will also pop up. And if I also downloaded something new from the library um, or from the App Store, I can also see that content as new, and it will also show up here. So if we zoom in a little bit, on the right-hand side corner, we have access to the Wi-Fi information for the signal strength. We have a battery indicator and also a time and a clock. Uh, if I press this corner just once, it's going to bring up a, a, the full settings or the quick settings. I can see the time, I can see the battery information, I'm at 71%, uh, the Wi-Fi, the mute, the mute for the speakers, and the rotation screens if I want to turn the accelerometer on and off. Overall, we're pretty impressed with the Wi-Fi strength and the battery life, uh, even though, of course, this isn't going to be an e-ink experience, uh, as in it's going to last forever on a charge, we were able to use it sparingly, and it's going to last around uh, a full week, which is um, more than I can even hope for on a tablet. As far as, uh, battery, as, as Wi-Fi strength goes, we, it seems to have a pretty strong reception. Even w when we're uh, quite a, a far distance from the router, it's still showing up as a very strong signal, which is always good. On the bottom here, we also have a library button, and when we press that, it's going to take us to our uh, currently open book. For example, right now I'm opening uh, Pride and Prejudice, so that if I'm reading this free sample book that I was provided with, it's going to automatically show up, and uh, I'll be able to see this book. And speaking of the book experience, you can see that this is basically what you're going to have. It's very similar to reading on an iPad or any other electronic uh, LCD type of e-reader. It shows up text very well, and flowing back and forth between the pages is never you know, really an issue. There are no dedicated buttons on the frame to help you assist with the actual operation of turning pages. You just basically swipe, which is more than enough in my option, in my opinion. Pressing on the screen once will bring up some more options, and on the bottom you can see that you can slide through the different pages of the book without having to, you know, uh, slide through them one by one. And you can go to a particular page by pressing that, and it's going to enter a number, like for example five. And when I go to that page, it's going to bring me to five, which happens to be the table of contents. I can also go back to my previously used page. I can also press a content library. I can find a particular word or passage by typing it in, like so. And you can see that the QWERTY keyboard is pretty responsive and easy to use. It's surprisingly decent, and I can even use Xarometer. Um, probably not on this application in particular, but on some applications. There was notifications. I'm going to exit out of that, tap again. We also have a share, a font size, which is pretty important for some people. Uh, you can select between different fonts um, if you, you know, want something that's a little bit more easier to read or, or something that's a little bit smaller if you're annoyed at how large the font is, you can adjust that accordingly and it's very easy to do. You can also use night instead of day and that's going to just invert the settings. And instead of showing up as a white background with black lettering, you're going to have blue lettering with uh, a black background. So if I'm reading in bed or in a darker environment, I can still see the text really easily. I can also see the margins and then adjust those things. So very easy to use. A lot of options that you typically don't get in something like a tablet because this is optimized just for reading. You also have a Discover, which will show up with similar content and similar books. So let's go to chapter 23 really quick. And as, as you can see, loading things are pretty fast and responsive. 
So uh, you can also bookmark a page by pressing the bookmark key, on, which is always going to be available on the top of the screen. Or if I wanted to highlight something in particular, I can also press a long hold on it, and then I can drag on a passage and highlight it, or I can add a note to it or share it with friends and family using Twitter or Facebook and, and any other uh, popular uh, social service that you can find on the web. You can also look up stuff from the dictionary and also have a find, which is just finding a passage. So for example, if I wanted to add a note, First, let's highlight it. I'm going to highlight it. It's showing up as green. I can also change the font of the highlighting, I believe. Um, or I can add a note to this, and for example, like test. And you can see that I can post this test on here. And next time, it's going to show up as a little note icon. And when I press on it again, it's going to pop up there. So it's a great little bit of a learning tool, especially if you're an avid reader and you want to build up more vocabulary. This is a great tool to have, um, especially if you're using this as a learning tool as well as a student. Um, then it's, it's a great way to, again, build up your uh, vocab skills and uh, reading skills because it has a lot of tools to help you annotate and uh, critically read through different passages of different books. So pressing on the home key again will take you back to the home screen. If you want to press home, it's going to take us there. Um, that's just a notification icon, which if you press on the bottom layer there, it's going to bring you up a notification drawer. But I'm just going to press home, and it's going to take me home once more. The top of the device also has a keep reading icon. Pressing on that will bring me back to the book. We also have a more icon, which if we press once, it's going to show up our popular books and popular files on this product. So I'm going to press on the home again. It's going to take me to the library, and this is currently all the books that I have in my library. I uh, haven't really downloaded much, but I'm going to show you a magazine really quick and show you how the screen does with that. Um, you'll see that it's pretty, pretty responsive and uh, fairly impressive as well. And because this is a full color based content, it also has accelerometer fully working, which is a nice extra. Um, so now if I rotate the screen, it will hopefully, if it's working right, uh, work with um, using the accelerometer to go left and right. Maybe I turn the accelerometer off, so I'm going to ho go home again and then uh, press on this quick settings, auto rotate screen, now I'm turning it on, so now it's fully working. I'm going to go back to my uh, magazine article and it will probably work now. Yes, it will. So you can see that the colors on the screen are very vivid and they're very, very uh, gorgeous to look at. The color saturation is very accurate and um, the reproduction rate is just really good. Uh, just as good as a, a typical magazine you might download in stores. So uh, this is a you know, very good experience overall for reading magazines and kids' books. Now, one thing I did find a little bit annoying was the fact that, you know, the articles on the page are very small because this is a 7-inch tablet. It's not a 10-inch tablet or something like that, like on an iPad, so that I have to zoom in a lot if I wanted to read, you know, specific articles, uh, which is something you definitely want to take note of because it isn't as large. But Barnes & Noble does have a very good uh, way of doing this without having, without having you to zoom, you know, in and out of pages. You can just press the article view button and that will allow you to bring up a quick article view for you to read, which is a lot more simpler, but you also miss out on some of the visual, uh, you know, dazzling effects and pictures that are also present uh, otherwise with this interface. And you can see that pinch to zoom works fairly well, but it's a little bit, thinking about it, the processor is a little bit sluggish at this. And you can see that, um, again, reading, reading a magazine's and content is a true joy because the screen is just, again, so good. It's something that we haven't really seen before on, on an e-reader or before, and we think Bar Barnes and & Noble and, uh, you did a great job with the no color in terms of making a great screen on this device. So next one is Shop. That's going to take you into the App Store, and also you can download more books. Of course, books is, goes first, be, is, goes first uh, beyond anything else like um, applications, but that doesn't mean you, you can't have fun with this tablet. Barnes & Noble certainly hopes that you will, and it has uh, games and applications such as Angry Birds, all the most popular uh, Facebook, MySpace applications for you to download for free and, and for cost. And pressing on the apps uh, selection, if you press on that, it's just going to show you your different applications. Uh, one thing to notice that when you first turn this device on, instead of logging into a Gmail account, it's going to ask you to create a Barnes & Noble account, which is actually not the same thing as a Gmail account, so make sure that you uh, know that, and if you don't have one, it's very easy to create, and it's also free, so uh, fairly easy to do as well. You can just select games from children's, productivity, health, tools, news and weather, and uh, I wanted to go back, this is social, and it shows us our top picks and their prices. For example, Office Suite uh, Professional is going to allow me to edit and uh, create Excel, uh, PowerPoint, and uh, Word documents on the device. So it's great for uh, mobile professionals, and if you're looking for something like that, it's also available on this product. 
and uh, you know other games like Cut the Rope. They're very popular and they run pretty well on this device. There isn't a ton of stuttering in terms of actually performing in the games. A lot of graphic intense games though are going to slow down a little bit. Um, overall though the accelerometer is pretty impressive as well so it does a nice job of doing that. The apps is going to take me to my library of applications and for example right now I have 11 applications including chess, contacts, crossword, email, my music player, my media player, uh, download and Pandora, Nook friends and of course I also have Twitter. I also have Sudoku. So if I wanted to play chess, I can press on the chess uh, application, and uh, hopefully it's going to load for me in a second. There we go, and then you basically interact with the screen, and uh, press new game to start a new game with an opponent. You can choose to play with another friend, or also play with the computer. And overall, it's a fairly easy to do... Uh, Fairly easy to do uh, operation, again, thanks to the touchscreen. And um, again, it has a few basic extras and games that are included out of the box, which is always nice. So even if you don't have a Wi-Fi connection out of the box, you still have a few entertainment options to go. So for example, if I just got this device, I'm taking it on a road trip tomorrow. I haven't even downloaded anything on it. It already comes included with a, a few sample books and a few sample games. So I won't be bored on the trip because some tablets are very clean slate. They don't include anything on it. This already has some content on it. As far as the web browser experience goes, don't expect it to be too fancy, but it does do the job in terms of doing basic browsing and uh, basic uh, multitasking in, in terms of opening different pages and stuff. And um, I'm just going to brighten this off a little bit. You can see that it loads automatically to Google first, which uh, it does a pretty nice job of. And unlike uh, the new the uh, magazine article, uh, pinch to zoom and multi touch works really really nicely in the web browser. Uh, probably because you know the National Geographic magazine there was just really too intense in terms of having you know giant pictures and stuff, which is confusing the tablet a little bit. Uh, but you can see that browsing the web is a really responsive and a very uh, fluid. Uh, experience overall. So if I wanted to search on something, I can press on the icon. You can see that the touch screen uh, overall works pretty well. You can use, also rotate it using the accelerometer to make it in the um, horizontal view. And as a result, the QWERTY keyboard is going to be really large and uh, it's very comfortable to type on. The keys are absolutely huge now. So if I wanted to do a test, uh, maybe Barnes & Noble Nook. Oops, I'm just going to search Nook. Nook Color e-reader. I'm going to search that and it's going to automatically go and do that. Um, so overall, a pretty impressive web browser. It's not going to display all the Flash content that you want. It does display a few basic uh, Flash contents I found. But if you really want to play YouTube and other uh, video-based applications, your best bet is still going to be with downloading a YouTube client or YouTube application, which is going to be free in the App Store. Uh, even though YouTube has been working with the native browser, it's going to just play with a mobile version on YouTube. If you press on it using this browser, it's still going to play. It's going to pop up a video in your video player, and then it's going to start streaming streaming, which is a fairly impressive uh, aspect of this device. I don't know why Google is being so slow right now. Um, it seems like I have a good network connection, but um, not really sure why Google is being sluggish. But uh, there, I'll go back. I'll go to Google Earth, and maybe that's going to be a little bit faster. I don't know. There you go. Now it's fully working, which is strange. I'm going to show you multi-touch again. It looks and works pretty well. If I wanted to go to a very complex site to show you, show you the uh, full capabilities of the web browser, like New York Times, which is a standard for testing if a uh, web browser is capable or not, uh, it's going to load the pages fairly fast and responsive, especially over Wi-Fi. A thing to note here is the Barnes & Noble Nook Color version I have here is not a 3G optimized version. Uh, Barnes & Noble does plan to have those in the future, but not in this particular model. So you are limited again to having a Wi-Fi hotspot for doing that. I believe I already pressed the full version, it's just loading that right now. It's a little bit more complex than the mobile site. There we go. And you can see that some ads, which are Flash-based, are already loading. So it does show you that Flash content does work, kind of, sort of, but not fully. And uh, you can see that New York Times is slightly you know, slower than the other pages to load because it's so complex. And you obviously expect that from something that you know isn't a tablet first, rather than it's more of an e-reader first than a tablet first uh, product. Um, but still, nevertheless, it does the job, and you can still read articles and uh, look at pictures and uh, do different web browsing experiences if you wanted to check the weather or do anything like that. It does a great job of doing that for you. Let's go home one more time. This is the settings, and that's going to bring you to the 
full settings, and that's basically it as far as the Nook, uh, Barnes & Noble Nook color goes. It's a very decent e-reader. You have to know that this device is targeted at kids, at people who love to read magazines, have magazine subscriptions. Um, otherwise, if you are an avid, just a regular book reader, I would still advi advise you to go with an ink-based e-reader, unless you don't have a tablet already and you just wanted to get something to read books and browse the web and play games. Otherwise, if you already have a tablet, if you already have like a smartphone, uh, then I don't really see, you know, the biggest point in getting another color-based device, which is very similar to what you already have, repeated functions. Um, but otherwise, if you're looking for this product, I think a Barnes Noble does a very good job of manufacturing one. Uh, it's a very solid build quality, has a very, very attractive price to it, and everything in it performs just very solidly. So uh, a nice product out there. If you know what you're looking for, then this is certainly a product to take a look at. So thanks for watching our full video review here at OS and VDXReviews.com of the Barnes & Noble Nook Color e-reader. If you want to check out our full video review, please visit our website at OS and VTXReviews.com. Thanks for watching.